Number 15. Undertow In this seriously frightening video, you see a diver being swept away by the undertow. The undertow is the average undercurrent, which is moving offshore. When waves are approaching shore, according to Wikipedia, undertow is a necessary and universal feature. It is a return flow compensating for the onshore directed average transport of water by the waves in the zone above the wave throws, compensating for the onshore directed average transport of water by the waves in the zone above the wave troughs. In this case, undertow can happen anywhere near the shore at any time, so it's important that divers like this one are aware of their surroundings, wouldn't want to get bashed into something due to the force of the undertow. Number 13. Under a Freighter This dive got really dangerous really quickly when the diver decided to dive the St. Clair River, which drains Lake Huron, into Lake St. Clair. He wasn't expecting something dangerous to happen, but danger always seeks adventurers. As he was swimming, a massive freighter came straight at the diver, forcing him to cling to the rope that is secured to the rock bed in order to pull himself closer to the rocks and away from the freighter's ship. The camera goes out of focus as the diver's pulse quickens when he loses balance. Due to the freight passing overhead, fear is in the freighter's propeller, which is spinning only a few short meters from the diver's head. Most viewers of this diver's video commented just to say how dangerous this was. Locker Gremlin 1 also noted, Watching this video gave me anxiety. You're not alone, Locker Gremlin. Number 12. A Gun YouTuber DealMyD often goes diving and posts his findings on YouTube, but this one prompted him to call the police. The channel's uploader, Jake from Columbus, Georgia, posted the video on December 29, 2016. When Jake dives the Columbus Rivers, he usually discovers a treasure trove of sunglasses, fishing gear, and cameras. Once he even found an iPhone which was still operating, and he attempted to return it to its owner. But this day, he would discover something more. The seemingly innocent dive turned up a possible murder weapon, a pistol, which he deemed a one-of-a-kind find and almost as cool as finding a GoPro. He also said it was most definitely a murder weapon and wondered if he should turn it into the police. Of course he should, and he did. When the police arrived, Jake gave them the gun. The officer said, I know for sure we won't be able to get any fingerprints off the gun, but we'll take it back, try and run the serial number, and find out if it's stolen or anything like that. Jake admitted that he would have rather kept the gun because it was a special find in the river. But in the end, the police would probably get more use out of it, especially if it had been involved in a crime. Who knew diving might help solve a murder mystery? Number 11. Massive Sea Creature this massive sea creature was caught on video by divers off of an oil rig. This thing looks like a gelatinous mass. It moves like a jellyfish, but it does not appear translucent like one. From far off, it has brownish, grayish, murky skin like a brown paper bag. The skin also has a plastic-like sheen, and when it comes closer, it spreads its body in a way somehow reminiscent of a flower petal. It appears orange, iridescent, and somewhat translucent. At 4 minutes 12 seconds, you are treated to a view of the creature's stomach or teeth or something unidentifiable. Incredibly creepy and quite frightening. While most in the comments section of this video are joke guessing at what this massive sea creature is, saying it's the blob or an evil fitted sheet monster. Andre Andro has an accurate answer. He said this creature was first described in 1967 by F.S. Russell and is called a Deep Staria Enigmatica, aka a jellyfish. He writes, The bell of this jellyfish is very thin and wide, up to approximately 10 meters, and resembles a translucent, undulating sheet or lava lamp as the animal moves. 
They are usually found in Antarctic and near Antarctic seas but have been spotted in waters near the United Kingdom at depths of 829 to 1,830 meters. Whether this jellyfish is super dangerous or not, one thing's for sure, I wouldn't want to run into this thing in the wide open sea. Too freaking creepy. Number 10. Underwater Hunter if we all had this underwater hunter's mad skills, we'd need no oxygen tanks to deep sea dive. This underwater hunter goes deep sea hunting without air. He takes a breath and dives in, hunting bow in tow, to catch some deep water fish. No diving gear, no fins, nothing. He dives, kicks, and is off, searching for his next meal. He dives 20 meters to the sea floor, and at this depth, after exerting himself, his heartbeat slows to around 30 beats per minute. A normal resting heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. The pressure at these depths also crushes his lungs, making them one-third the size of their normal volume. He is able to walk across the sea floor as if he were on land, because he's negatively buoyant enough to do so. He focuses on the hunt, instead of on air, which his lungs are crying out for. 1.75 minutes underwater without air, and the hunter spies a fish. Dinner. He shoots it with his arrow and makes his way back up. In this video, he remained underwater for 2.5 minutes with one breath. That's scary and impressive. Number 9. Dive Goes Wrong Near Miller's Point, South Africa, three divers attempt their deep advanced dive on the 3rd of March 2012. They dove off the SAS Good Hope without a care in the world, but soon they'd be praying for their lives. One diver, Doug, suffered a burst eardrum. This made him experience vertigo, and everything under the water started spinning like a top. I had no idea what was up or down, had to focus on another diver to see where I was, Doug writes. Doug then signaled to his friend, Wasim, that he was having trouble, so they swam up a bit. Wasim knocked the diving regulator out of Doug's mouth, which exacerbates the vertigo. When the instructor came to help Doug, Doug says soon after Wasim started panicking, he completely blacked out. Doug and Nikki began to ascend. As Wasim was taken by the instructor, at one point Wasim tried to break away from the instructor to reach the surface, but the instructor hung onto his fin. One of the only divers who tried to keep calm and carry on was a female diver named Nikki. She did, in fact, manage to calm the others. Wasim doesn't even remember the dive. What was he panicking about? Whatever happened to him on that dive, we can only guess. Number 8. Scuba Diving and a Tsunami A tsunami often happens when an earthquake or a volcanic eruption occurs underwater. The resulting seismic waves may hit coastal cities and destroy whole buildings, taking with them many victims. Remember that giant wall of water that hit Japan in 2011, resulting in nearly 16,000 people passing away? That was a tsunami. So who'd be crazy enough to dive when there's a chance of a tsunami? Turns out these folks on a video uploaded by Andrew Chan. One survivor of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami told his story to Aret's online magazine. Yossi Hassan said he was thrown back all of a sudden and described the scene as follows. It's difficult to explain the feeling underwater. Imagine running at full speed against the wind and still being pushed back against an enormous invisible force that is simply impossible to overcome, he said. As he was being pulled back to the surface, he looked for his girlfriend, who hadn't been able to traverse the coral walls before the tsunami hit. Instead, she was caught hold of a cable that was tied to a buoy because she knew what she had to avoid, ascending too quickly, lest she suffer the bends, he said. The good thing is, tsunamis aren't impossible to predict. They often accompany earthquakes. If the diver is in the spinning current, they're likely to feel as these divers did in the video, like rag dolls being tossed in a washing machine. 
Number 7. Mysterious Creature in the Dominican Republic In the Dominican Republic in April 2013, uploader DR Local encountered a mysterious sea creature. During a scooter-powered night scuba dive, the time was 9.15 p.m., while the depth was 20 meters. The creature was reportedly bony, three-quarters of a foot long, with a small head and sharp teeth. It also had translucent fins and a purple and steel sheen-colored body. The mysterious creature swam both backwards and forwards. The dorsal fin helped it maneuver both directions and propelled it at higher speeds moving forwards which made it appear more eel-like rather than blade-shaped. According to the uploader, what could this eel-like creature be? YouTube commenters, of course, are full of suggestions. Doom Octopus said it looked like a young ore fish, while Zane Reavers said it was a cutlass fish. Both of these seem plausible, but Sam Paul's suggestion seems to be on the nose. It's a hair tail, very common around Sydney, Australia, usually fished at night by a very dedicated fisherman, very sharp teeth, and not too bad to eat. Whatever the thing is, I wouldn't want to run into it in the depths of the sea at night. Number 6. The Last Dive of David Shaw Aussie scuba diver and Cathay Pacific Airline pilot David Shaw broke a number of diving records in the Bushman's Hole, South Africa, including depth running a line, depth at altitude on a rebreather, depth in a cave on a rebreather. All in April of 2004, the dive lasted 9 hours and 40 minutes, and the cave elevation was 1,550 meters or 5,085 feet. During the dive, Shaw found the body of Dion Dreyer at a depth of 270 meters or 885 feet. Dreyer was a diver from South Africa who attempted Bushman's Hole 10 years prior and passed away in the process. Shaw decided to go back under to recover Dreyer's body about four months later on the 8th of January 2005. Recording the deep dive on an underwater camera, the video showed that Shaw cut Dreyer's harness and found it difficult to maneuver him. When Dreyer's body started floating, experts had advised Shaw that because the body appeared to be in its skeletal form, it would be negatively buoyant, but Dreyer's body had become a soapy substance that actually floats inside his wetsuit. As Shaw struggled with the body, the body bag's lines became wrapped up in the light head of his cave light, which Shaw had set on the cave floor in order to use both hands to move Dreyer. Researchers later found out that Shaw was having respiratory issues from the high pressure and that the struggle to free himself from the line resulted in his passing. Both his and Dreyer's bodies were recovered the following day when they floated to the surface. This was Shaw's 333rd dive in just over five years. The footage of his final dive is both sad and scary to watch as it reminds you just how careful you must be in any venture underwater. Number 5. Underwater Earthquake Recorded by Jan Paul Rodriguez in a resort area of the Philippines near Manila, earthquakes rocked the island in 2017 and afterwards the aftershocks terrorized the land. A 5.6 magnitude earthquake struck, followed by a 6.0 magnitude, which forced many to flee their homes. The mayor of Mabini, Noel Luistro, said, Our tourists left out of fear. They may be affected by the earthquakes. I need to declare a state of calamity. This was at the beginning of the summer travel season in the Philippines. Many feared a tsunami would follow as the villagers rushed to find higher grounds, while others, including divers, swam in the sea as the earthquake struck. This video shows the truly scary impact of an earthquake under the sea. Reportedly, the first earthquake struck at a depth of 27 kilometers and the second at 24. This isn't the Philippines' first earthquake and neither will it be the last. The islands sit on the Pacific Ring of Fire, known for its volcanic eruptions and not infrequent earthquakes. In 1990, a 7.7 .7 magnitude quake struck the northern Philippine island, Luzon, taking the lives of almost 2,000 people. This video is visual proof of the destructive magnitude of nature underwater. Number 4. Giant Squid This giant squid used to be a mystery, but not anymore. 
Divers caught this giant squid on video. The monster has deep sea gigantism, so it can grow up to 13 meters in length for a female squid and 10 for males. Some claims allege that they can grow up to 20 meters or 65 feet. 2004 saw the first giant squid footage in its natural environment. With images taken by Japanese researchers, giant squid are built much like regular squid, with eight arms, two longer tentacles, and a mantle. Although the squid is massive in size, it doesn't weigh a lot. The whale is the giant squid's primary predator, and the squid is much lighter with only hundreds of kilograms, rather than the whale's thousands. Researchers actually follow whales in order to observe the giant squid because the whales were so adept at locating them. Suction cups are found on the inside of the tentacles and arms, the circumference of which holds sharp teeth. This is a deadly combo, the suction cups and the teeth, allowing the giant squid to attach to its prey where the suction cups leave circular scars. Another live squid filming in its natural habitat occurred in November 2006. Diver Scott Cassell's goal was to film this magnificent creature in the Gulf of California. They attached their camera to a Humboldt squid's fin, and the carrier squid was able to catch the 12-meter-long giant squid on video. The squid in question was demonstrating predatory tactics in the video. This video, however, was taken by Japan's National Science Museum. The squid in this video is an 11-foot female weighing 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. The team baited the giant squid with one of medium size, and in an effort to take it aboard the ship, the giant squid passed away. Believe it or not, the giant squid is superseded in size by one other mollusk, the colossal squid, whose mantle is almost two times as long. Number 3. Prehistoric Shark This underwater video will give you nightmares. A prehistoric shark, not often seen due to its habitat being more than 600 meters under the sea, was caught on film by marine park staff in Japan. A fisherman at a port close to the marine park told the staff when he saw the frightening monster with its grin of sharp teeth and completely spooky overall look. They then caught the shark which stands about 1.6 meters or 5 feet and identified it as a female frilled shark, often called a living fossil. The species is super primitive, being as it hasn't really evolved since the prehistoric era. The staff then moved the ancient fish to a seawater pool where they could then observe it swimming. The video here catches the shark opening its jaws and swimming around. Despite the shark being in poor health and passing away only a few hours after capture, the marine park official said this was such a rare opportunity to capture video of a live specimen. He stated, they live between 600 and 1,000 meters under the water. That's 3,280 feet, which is deeper than humans can go. We think it may have come close to the surface because it was sick, or else it was weakened because it was in shallow waters. The sharks are, indeed, rarely viewed alive, but are sometimes caught dead in trawler nets. I don't think I'd want to come face to face with this creature, dead or alive. Number 2. Shipwreck Survivor when divers came off a capsized boat off the Nigerian coast, they probably didn't expect to find any survivors. After all, it had been nearly three days since the boat had sunk. No human could survive three days underwater, could they? But 29-year-old Harrison O'Keen did. The cook was working in a tugboat called the Jaskun 4 that was towing an oil tanker when the thing went down and sank to the bottom of the Atlantic at about 100 feet below the water's surface. The tugboat capsized upside down, taking the other 11 members of the crew down with it, but O'Keen was able to squat down in a pocket of air and survive three days under the ocean on a single bottle of coke. He also had two flashlights to brighten the darkness, but they died after less than a day. Imagine being 100 feet under the sea in complete darkness for two whole days. You'd be nearly hopeless, but that's when O'Keen heard the sound of a boat and saw the lights of rescue divers shining through the water. He couldn't believe it. Then the light disappeared. He came in, but he was too fast, O'Keen said. So I saw the light, but before I could get to him, he was already out. I tried to follow him in the pitch darkness, but I couldn't trace him, so I went back. 
O'Keen held his breath and swam through the boat trying to find him. He returned to his slowly receding air pocket. The Dutch diving company, DCN, were searching for bodies, not live people. But when the diver returned to receive a tap on his neck from O'Keen, he assumed the man had passed away. He said so into his microphone, but then he reached his hand to take the body, and O'Keen reached back and pulled. That's when the man began to exclaim that he was alive. The diver came into the air pocket and gave O'Keen hot water to warm him, after which he gave him an oxygen mask. He was then put into a decompression chamber for nearly 60 hours before it was safe to return him to land. He suffers survivor's guilt and has also been accused or questioned about whether he used black magic to survive. He was even questioned by his local church pastor. As well, he has PTSD and wakes up at night from nightmares of shipwrecks. He plans to spend the rest of his days on dry land. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. I'm currently doing a super poll on my Instagram. If you believe ghosts are real, then go to my most recent photo and tap the like button. If you don't, DM me saying why. When you're done, come right back to this video to find out the number one entry. Also, follow me on Twitter at YTChills because that's where I post video updates. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. Final Moments when you record your underwater dive, you never think you'll be recording your final moments on Earth. That's what Russian diver Yuri Lipsky did in April of 2000. He was diving the Blue Hole, a coral-filled underwater sinkhole that's 394 feet deep on the east coast of Egypt. A 130-foot depth is recommended for recreational divers, but technical divers are intrigued by the structural challenges the Blue Hole has to offer, including the arch, an 85-foot-long passage that leads from the sinkhole to the sea. The beautiful arch is a struggle to enter. As it's dark and offers poor visibility, Lipsky entered the Blue Hole and dove to a little more than 300 feet a point at which some might suffer from nitrogen narcosis, a narcosis that manipulates the mind, including euphoria, confusion, hallucinations, impaired judgment, and overconfidence. While as most technical divers take along multiple air tanks of Trimex, helium, nitrogen, and oxygen, Lipsky brought along only one. He never resurfaced. Lipsky's parents asked another diver to bring Lipsky's body back, and when he did, he discovered the intact video of his last moments. You can hear his fear and distress in the video as he becomes too disoriented to recover himself. Lipsky is only one of an estimated 130 divers who've lived their last moments in the blue hole within the last 15 years. 